I can go down to a tiny piece of timber an inch long and still cut it safely. 0.1 of a millimetre out. Dave here, how are you? I've recently purchased a Rockler crosscut sled and I like it a lot. That's why I'm telling you guys about it. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't tell you. I'd be embarrassed. I'd go and hide in the corner. Why did I get this? I already have an Incra. I already have Mitre set. I already have a dirty big crosscut sled for cutting square. That, that's where it comes in. This I can cut at any angle I want and the timber can travel past. I can go down to a tiny piece of timber an inch long and still cut it safely. I'm going to go through the positives and the negatives. There's one negative to this sled and I found a cure for it but I'll go through all the positives first. It is a zero clearance, meaning I married this sled to my table saw. You must cut the edge of the sled off when you get it onto your saw. So it was a very easy thing to do. Now I have a zero clearance there, so all of my cuts will be nice and clean without any furring happening off the bottom of the cut. Next thing, hold down clamp. I can bring this clamp right up into the corner there. You can see where it's coming to there and hold down very small pieces of timber very efficiently. That keeps my fingers safe and also makes for a more accurate cut. If something's held still while, while you're cutting and not moving it around at all, it's going to be more accurate. A large scale protractor. Look at the size of this. I'll pull this back here. The size of this protractor is huge. Even with my old eyes, and I'm sure I'm not the only person out there that struggles to see the scale on that with our glasses, I can see the scale on this dead easy. Not a problem at all. I love that. While I'm talking about the protractor out there, the distance from the pivot out to the area that I look at, the, the crosshair, to see that protractor, that distance is about 14 to 15 inches. That gives me a very accurate reading. The distance on the INCRA is around 2 inches. It's from there to there. Not far at all. Still accurate, but not as accurate as this thing. So on the back of the sled here, where the fence comes back to rest, is a stop and I can adjust it. I'll show you a picture of that. So I can get it 90 degrees perfect before I start anything, then all of my angles will be accurate. Underneath the sled, the mitre bar is actually recessed into the sled. So it's not relying on a screw to hold it steady. It's in a slot, it's not going to go anywhere. It also has an adjustable protractor crosshair right there. So I can move it backwards and forwards after I get the sled set up at 90 degrees perfectly or get it up to naught. That's funny that they should call it naught, but once I get it to naught, I can put the crosshair over naught, tighten it up, with a hand screwdriver. Don't use a, a drill driver because you'll end up smashing that bit of plastic. It's not going to be that strong. The other thing is it has a sacrificial fence here. Now I can replace that. It's just a standard T-slot in the back and if you've got a cutter, a router cutter that can cut T-slots, you can keep making these things till the cows come home. There you go. That's the positives. Now I said there was a negative as well and the negative nearly made me return it but I decided to play with it and get it right. There are six ball bearing points that take up the slop in the miter slot. So it will adjust for your particular miter slot in your table saw. But the springs aren't long enough that go in there and don't give enough tension. They say you can tighten it up, but it only goes to a certain tightness and then that's it, won't, won't tighten anymore. I was still getting around two millimeters play, too much. I nearly sent the thing back. How did I get around it? it? Took me two minutes. I took every second grub screw out, took the spring out of those, took the ball bearing out of them, I kept the springs, then I undid the grub screws from the alternating holes and put that second spring, that, that spring that I took out of the other ones, I put in over the top of the other spring that was already in there, put the grub screw back, that increased the length of the spring and it works beautifully. So I can go into all the reasons why the grub screw wouldn't go any deeper and all that kind of stuff, but it's a waste of time. Second spring, two springs in those three positions, beautiful. You must tension it up a little bit and then back it off just so that it's right. If you do it too tight, the ball bearing will not turn at all. So 
but backed it off just a little bit, holds it perfectly. There is no slop. Absolutely accurate. Once we've got it all set up, now I can cut the sled so that it's married into my table saw's blade. So this is one unit now. All I have to do now is get it square. We put a square on the sled, bring it up to the blade, raise the blade all the way up, push it to the middle of the blade. Don't touch the teeth of the blade because they're out proud of the actual face of the blade. Adjust this around until it's perfect, lock it, go to the other side, advance the stop, the fence stop, until it touches the fence. That should be 90 degrees. Undo the crosshair, bring it back into position so it's right over zero, tighten it up, not too much, set. Now this is going to be pretty accurate. Now if you want to go with one step further we can do the five cut system and get it extremely accurate. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Now I'm going to take a sliver off the side. One. I'm going to rotate it clockwise and take another sliver off the side. Remember that's one. Two. Take another sliver off the side. This is three. Rotate it. This is four. Now the last one, we're going to rotate and we're going to hang out about... Oh, I'm not making an off-cut. We're going to measure that. Cut number five. Turn it off. Keep out of its way. Now, we're going to measure this and we're also going to take one more turn and have a look to see if it lines up with the side of the sled. I can tell you straight away, that's how much we're out. See that? So over five times 380 millimeters, I am out by that much. Let's get the calipers. Eleven point two one, twelve point one two. So we're nearly one millimeter out in two meters, near two meters. So that's pretty good. So we'll advance it now, ever so slightly. I'll do it a quarter of a turn. Not even that. And I lock it, and I'm going to do the whole process again. Try that. Wait for the saw to stop. So I know this one's going to be perfect. It's as close as we're ever going to get. So, where are we? 10.97 millimeters, which is close enough to 11 millimeters in my book. And 11 point, not even point one. 
So we're about we're about 0.1 of a millimeter out over that distance. 300 650 is 1300 plus that length. That's 1650. Let me just write that down so we can see what we're talking about here. Over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is 1650 millimetres. I am 0.1 of a millimetre out. 0 0.1. Now, get that in reality. That is over 16.5 metres. I would be out one millimeter you know what that that's good enough for me if I'm one millimeter out in 16 and a half meters that'll do me now the rockless sled I use in conjunction with my miter set segments and the Incra I can set this from that now I have already set this up and it's a very easy situation of now using this as a sliding bevel. I'll just move that out of the way, bring that down to there, bring that up to that, and there I am. I am now at that magical 25.7 whatever degrees it is. You might say, Dave, why don't you just set the Rockler crosscut sled to that same angle. Well, it's very hard. That this goes down to half degrees and there's a big space in between and I can guess those bits in between, but referencing off something that's been created with a CNC machine, I can't compete with that. This is very accurate. Okay, so one other thing that I haven't mentioned is that you can put an anti-drop plate here. Just get a bit of MDF or particle board or whatever you want. Same thickness as the sled get a fixtures bar of some sort that's going to drop into there, screw it down to it, there you go. You've got an anti-drop so that when you get into the end of the cut, you don't get this little tear and little bump left on the cut. Make it beautiful. There you go. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, keep on coming back. I will put some links in the description box down the bottom, and I will see you next time. Bye.